my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dalex and I'm out in Heron at the moment in low sec doing a little bit of scanning. There's not an awful lot about, I found one data site. I'm just scanning down the boxes before I commit to a hack. I'm not actually alone in here as you can see from local. I've got my D scan range down to 5 AU because I want to see if anyone's coming my way. Particularly the Gnosis that I know is around. And I know from being around this little area, again, gathering intel and trying to keep note of what's going on all the time, that the guy in that Gnosis likes to hang around by the gate. He does spend some time on the belt. He's chased me off the belt a couple of times before when I'm out in a cormorant. I think he actually did that in one of the videos. But I'm just going to scan down the boxes. They're really pretty bad, <laughs> especially if there may be somebody after you. Now, what I'm really looking out for is somebody else coming into local especially if they're from the same alliance because uh, that means he may have called them in to come and get me in a faster ship. Now I'm not too worried about a Gnosis coming up onto the site after me because I'm looking out for him doing that and I'll simply run away. Although a Gnosis does lock very quickly especially for a battle cruiser, and it does get scanning bonuses so he may well have these sites bookmarked just to come and check them out and kill the people that are trying to hack them. He uh He's not going to catch me. I'm going to get away. I'm pretty sure of that. However, he could call a mate in. His alliance is tagged grey. Uh, I use the colour codes really to identify who people are rather than what they are, if you see what I mean. So the grey is what I've uh, tagged a local alliance around here. I'm going to learn some of their ways. You will be seeing in a video me learning their ways very closely when I met them on a gate camp. <laughs> but I'm going to cut that into a bit more of a fighty video. Which this one isn't. So this guy, this situation, this is the uh, avoid situation. I'm not going to get out of the way. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to do nothing if there's a bit of loot to be had. I'll get about 700k out of this one, so I'll have that. But I'm not going to linger. I'm going to head the other way. I know he's if he's on a gate, he's on over by the Goinard gate. I'm going to head the other way into the other system. Just get on with a bit more scanning. And indeed, here I am, and there's nothing next door apart from wormholes. I can see on my D-scan from here the gate in from the previous system. So if uh, Spider Kovax follows me in, I will see him immediately on my D-scan as well as in local. But we can keep an eye on the gate, which is always handy. Nothing in here but a trio of wormholes, which could be handy to pop in and have a little look. You've seen us do that before, and that can be very profitable. If there's nothing in your little local space, pop for a wormhole, grab some loot, suck some gas, have a different kind of day. But now we've got a Hecate on the D-scan. He's come through the gate, and I recognise this guy, Jim, and i am now got my eye out. I'm, even, I'm extending my D-scan because I'm expecting combat probes. There seems to be a, a bit of a trend at the moment for Hecates for combat probe launchers, expanded probe launchers, I should say. He's not got a significantly low security status, but maybe he's just learning his trade. But anyway, let's keep an eye out. We're going to descan a lot more, and I'm ready for the combat probes to pop up. Now, remember, they have to scan me down in exactly the same way as I'm scanning down these signatures. So if I keep my descan range down... I'm going to see them getting closer to me. And now you can see his probes on there. I'm going to bring the range down to 5 AU. Now, if I get his set of combat probes all on that D scan, I know he's getting pretty close and it's time for me to move. But I am going to linger around here till that happens. I like to make myself a pain. But this is definitely an evasion situation. I don't want this guy getting on grid with me. Blaster Hecate, and I'm going to assume it's a Blaster Hecate. I'm just going to melt my heron in seconds. But they put out a lot of DPS. But there are the set of combat probes on my D-scan. So I'm going to move over to my other safe. His ship is then going to just sit on my D-scan, which means I'm on his D-scan. The question is that I'm going to just sit here and wait to get the answer to, I think, is whether he's going to move his probes over and carry on trying to scan me down. How persistent is the guy, is what I'm finding out here. I'm also keeping an eye on local again in case he's called in a mate. You have to be aware that the locals may have all of these sites pre-bookmarked. They might not have hacked them deliberately. They might not want the loot. They might be after the kill. 
So somebody else has indeed come into local. So I'm just going to warp away anyway. But as I do so, I check the D-scan and you know, the combat probes are on their way into me again. But I'm confident in that situation that I'm kind of in control. I'm not going to let him get those probes close to me. It's another reason uh, why you want to move your safe spots now and again. Because the more you get probed down on your safe spot, the better an idea somebody is going to get of roughly where your safe spot is. Which means next time they scan it down, they're going to do it even quicker. I'm out on the belts now in the Corax. This bit of footage is at two times speed, just in case you get confused. I'm doing a bit of belt ratting. I'm actually trying light missiles with a small shield booster. Now, the advantage of the light missiles is you've got a great range. And uh, as you can see there, I've killed the two rats from far, far away. Now I've got to get over there. And I can only have an afterburner with the Tech 2 light missile launchers fitted on there and the shield booster, etc. And the... Uh, cap battery we'll have a look at the detail of the corax in its own little video i'm messing around with this fit this has its advantages which is you take a lot less damage because you can kill stuff from range uh, this is the slow bit especially with the smaller rats because you kill them so quickly you spend a lot of time just slow boating over to them but if they're going to drop me pink modules i'm more than happy to do that it's just about the amount of time you're spending on a belt and there's nothing more frustrating than getting chased off a belt when you've killed the rat already. That's an NPC miner I found. Never aggress lows unless you're ready to aggress lows. We'll have a look at what happens when you do one day. The kill board in this system, it's steady. And that's keeping the bounty bonus up to about 148% at the moment, which is very nice. Anyway, as I was saying, with the bigger rats, like this battleship, because they take longer to kill, you've got time to be in close by the time they blow up. Um, I usually orbit those at about 2,500 meters. You don't take any damage when you're in close. And you're right there to grab the loot and go away by the time they die. And it will take three or four minutes. I've got about 170 DPS with rage missiles. Uh, if I overheat, it's just under 200. But uh, it can do the job. The problem you're going to have is you're not going to be able to kill the clones in a 0 0.2 or 0 0.1. We're not going to be able to break their tank. Now, the clone soldier I've got here, we can take him down. There's no great problem. He gives us a bit of damage on the way in, as we'd expect. But once we're in close, we do a bit of repping. And the advantage of the repper, I guess, is that you can uh, be a bit more self-sufficient. You don't have to sit around waiting for your shields to recharge if you do take some damage. And also out on the pve sites uh once i've got this through a den uh, it'll go through the abyss then we'll get a video put together just to show you how versatile this can be it just hasn't got that uh higher dps up close to kill those fatter clones in the 0.2s so any of the other rats even in the 0.1 the frigates the destroyers the cruisers the battle cruisers you'll have no real trouble with at all even just with regular Scourge ammo, which is what I use for most light ratting, I'd probably switch to Navy for the clone soldiers and the battleships where applicable. Anyway, now we're on to the stalk section of the video. I'm happily chatting <laughs> uh, in local. Guys started a conversation with me about my alt name, and I'm actually trying to stalk those guys. I've seen a mining fleet out on my little meanderings with Fin Trash while I was ratting. I thought I'd come and have a look. I'm in with Anthrax, and as you can tell, because she's cloaked, she's an Amiga rule. She's in an Astero with the Covert Ops cloak. Again, the Astero will be getting a video soon, but right now, I'm on a belt. I know the Moon Miners have to be at a moon, so I've uh, put my D-scan down to a narrow, and I'm just checking each moon in turn. I've found the moon they're mining at, so I'm going to warp up there at 100 and just see what's going on. And there's a chance I could land close enough to a structure, a ship, or an asteroid to get decloaked. So do be ready to run the first time you go in like this. But warping it at 100, I should be okay. And there you go. So now I've got them on grid. I've got their station on grid. I'm cloaked. They've no idea that I'm here. The conversation is carrying on. I've cut out the typing just to save time. There you go. Using the look at feature is really useful. I can locate exactly where people are. We've got these two guys hanging out on the undock. You can also look at a ship and uh, you might be able to tell what weapons it's got. We've got a venture out on the belt. He could easily just be taken down in a destroyer. 
Last time, I do know these guys. They were in sailing for a while, and I did exactly this. And then went up with Finn Trash and his venture and started stealing their moon mine goo from right under their noses until they locked me with the station, so I left. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm just having a look around, trying to see where I might want to put myself a little perch and approach point. I'm having a nice conversation with the guys, and I may come back and obviously attack these guys, and the fact we've had a conversation, it's low sec, they're not going to be too annoyed that it, you know, low sec stuff happens, don't be scared of attacking people, it's one of the reasons I don't really make a big effort to get blue with all the locals around where I'm flying, because if you're blue with everybody, it gets a bit dull, to be honest with you, <laughs> I like it, um, you know, just be nice and respectful to people, chat to people, and then happily kill them, and one day they'll catch you, that's how I see it anyway, right, so let's have a look at what's going on around here, you can see the moon just up, up behind the station, so um, I've shown you moon mining before, the station basically shoots a big laser into the moon, breaks a chunk off and then tractor beams it over here so there's going to be a whole belt of the moon mining stuff here so if we look on the top mining tab there you go we can see all these asteroids the venture's gone back out there so we can have a look in on him and what i'll probably do at this stage is just get a bookmark or two Within a certain, oh, I don't know, a certain range of the belt as a starting point. Whether I come up here, I could spend ages up here putting bookmarks all around this area now. And then just come back when I'm ready in the right ship, when they're mining, and uh, pay them a little visit. Might just be an adventure, come and get myself a bit of that mine goo. So we'll set a bookmark on that asteroid right there. We'll make sure it's not going to expire because we wouldn't want to lose it. I have done that before. Quite frustrating it is too. I think if we just swing around the view, we'll find another asteroid further across the belt a little way, up over there, that one, and just set a bookmark on that one, just to give us two options for now. And then we'll move in a little bit closer, just to suss out if we can uh, get to an appropriate range without getting decloaked, being you know right on the station, just to figure out the geometry of everything in our heads. They've got no sentries out right now. Usually when these guys are mining, certainly with a bigger fleet, they'd have a couple of cruisers out at least, maybe some, uh, even some T3s. They were in a video actually, weren't they? Because they ended up putting out um, a T3 cruiser after my destroyer. That was right, and the caracals were chasing me. And we did take down one or two of their coveters with our long-range caracal. There you go. And that's how I set this up, <laughs> which I hadn't recorded at the time. I warped into 50 onto one of the bookmarks just to check that it is a, a reasonably safe little spot. It's the appropriate range for some stuff. Obviously, how close you want to warp into your bookmarks is going to depend on uh, what exactly you're there to do. But I think for now... That'll probably be enough. I may well come back, pay these guys a visit sometime, little drive-by. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, if you drop a, a destroyer in there and there's a few coveters around, it's just a game of how many you can kill. Remember, there's no Concord. Uh, you can keep going until you die, so it's kind of like a suicide gank, but it's probably going to be a lot more profitable than one you'd ever do out in uh, high sec, certainly in terms of the kill board anyway. Or we could simply do it as a hit and run, get in, get one barge, get a couple of barges and get out alive. It's not a bad technique to practice. We'll be seeing more of the Astero and the Amigas and their ships along the way. I know I haven't given them much time in the videos, but we certainly will start doing that. Cloaking is one of the greatest advantages as far as I'm concerned of being an Amiga. And for offensive work rather than uh, keeping you protected. Anyway, we're going to leave it there, guys. Leave us a like if you've liked it. Any comments or feedback, suggestions would be very welcome. I love your feedback as always. Your messages in game mails and in local are always very appreciated and make it all worthwhile as far as I'm concerned. Fly safe, fly brave. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch, of course. We'll be back very soon. But for now, take care of yourselves and each other and goodbye.